Hey everybody, Rabbi David here, your Torah Tech Guy, and I'm here with another how-to so I can share some great tech for your great Torah. This how-to is all about how to bring chat from Zoom into Ecamm or any other production software you're using. This is part dose, part do, part two. This is a sequel to the original one because the file from Isadora has been updated by the amazing Andy Carluccio, and I'm gonna show you some of the changes that he made today on how-to. All right, so let's not waste any time. Let's jump right into it. I have a Zoom meeting open right now with three participants in it. I've got my main computer. I've got um, a, a separate computer over there that doesn't have its camera on. And I've got the Zoom OSC client. That's what you're gonna need to make this all work. Zoom OSC, you can get it from liminalet.com. Liminalet.com is where you can find Zoom OSC. So let me bring you over to, uh, to that page where you can see I've got on the left-hand side here, I've got my Zoom client down here with um, three participants, only two of whom have video on. Um, up above here, I've got my Zoom OSC settings. Um, and I'm just gonna run you through this real quick. Um, on the top saying you've got participants, you wanna make sure that you're subscribed to all so that you can hear all the chat messages. If, for example, you were just doing a panel and you just wanted to get chat messages from your panel, if you were in webinar, you could certainly choose panelists also. Um, down here, you've got your log. If there are any errors that you see, those will show up there. I'm gonna come back to OSC settings in a moment. Licensing, right now I'm on the free version of Zoom OSC. This all works with the free version of Zoom OSC. I would encourage you to support the amazing work that Andy and his team have done and purchase a license. Um, in Zoom OSC settings, um, I've got my transmission IP that's be, uh, set to this computer because I'm running Zoom OSC and Isadora on the same computer. Uh, my transmission port is 1234. My receiving port is 9090. And you want to make sure that you change your OSC output rate to about 100 milliseconds. That's all you have to do. Transmission port 1234, receiving port 9090, OSC output rate 100 milliseconds. Over here on the left hand side, let me actually reset all of this. Um, this is Isadora and I will put the file for Isadora over in um, Discord. If you're watching it, uh, if you found this on Discord, I'll place it in the Ecamm Discord server and also in the Office Hours Zoom OSC Discord server or channel, I should say. Um, so this is what it looks like. Looks very similar to before. You've got all chats, accepted, and the graphic. I'm gonna go ahead and send a few chats through, and you'll see those come in in real time as those, ch those chats are sent through. And they immediately fall into the all chat um, area here. I can, if I see a chat here that I don't wanna even deal with, I can reject it. Um, but I also can go ahead and accept this. That will pop it over to the accepted column. Here, I can actually edit the text, and this is one of the changes. This wasn't working before, so maybe I don't, I'm not really interested in people's questions. I'll take out questions or, and just leave, if you have any thoughts, please be sure to share them in the chat. And you can see that it updates that in real time. I can then click make graphic. It looks like nothing happened, but in fact, it did happen because when I click graphic in, you'll see that message come up at the bottom with the name and the text, and then I can click graphic out and it goes away. I'll show you very quickly what it looks like on this side, click graphic in, it's gonna hide my face a little bit and then click graphic out. Um, couple of the features that weren't here or that I didn't highlight last time, first of all, you can change the font size in the preview screens. So if you just scroll up or down after clicking in this box, you can change the font size. As you get older like me, you might need to do that. Same thing for the accepted, you can click up or down. Um, I didn't mention earlier that you can also reset any of these. So if I click reset and reset, it clears everything out. I'll go ahead and refill um, those comments in there, those chat messages in there. One thing that's brand new is these color pickers. So before you had to go into the back end um, to actually make any changes uh, to the colors. And you can see this back end, it's very complex, at least to my unlearned eye. Uh, so the less time I have to spend back there, probably the better. Uh, not for me, but for the program itself, because I will definitely mess something up. So over here, you can drag this around. Let me bring a graphic in so you can see. You can drag this around, and the color right now, I'm adjusting the color of uh, the name of the, the speaker, uh, excuse me, the uh, the 
person who wrote the chat, you can change it here. I also asked Andy to add a hex code uh, field because I know what my the hex codes for my brand colors are and I wanted to be able to put those in there instead of um, having to kind of search around. But if you like searching around and mixing it up and changing colors, you can absolutely do that for the name, for the background, and for the border. The color of the chat itself will always be white. That can be changed on the back end if you want to. You can also change your background opacity right down here. So how does all of this get from Isadora, from Zoom OSC into Isadora and then over to into Ecamm? Well, it's pretty simple actually. Up at the top here in Isadora, you click on Output and you choose Stage Setup. There's only one thing you have to do here and that is down at the bottom, click NDI. Once you turn on NDI in Isadora, Zoom, um, Ecamm will automatically see it as a camera source. So I'm going to go ahead and get out of Isadora and I'm going to take you over to Ecamm now to see what it looks like on that side. So now you're looking at Ecamm behind the scenes here. And I'm going to go ahead, this is just my main camera. I'm going to go ahead and add a camera on top of that. I'm going to click on the camera picker and you can see I have five different cameras here. I've got Blackmagic Design. That's my um, uh, my ATEM Mini through which my camera is coming. I've got a Cam Link. That's actually my other computer. I've got David's Mac Mini Local Zoom ISO Primary. That's another computer. Don't worry about that. David's MacBook Pro 2 Local Isadora Zoom Chat Overlay. I named um, the NDI feed to Isidore Zoom Chat Overlay, and then my iPad. So if I click on the Isidore Zoom Chat Overlay, nothing happens. Actually, something did happen. This camera now is that NDI overlay, but I haven't turned any of the graphics on. So what I do is I'm just gonna make this full screen, and now I can leave it. Now I don't have to do anything else with it. And now as soon as I click on back in Isidore, graphic in, you'll see the graphic comes in and graphic out. Now, one of the things that's really, really nice about this implementation is that I don't need a Stream Deck button to turn this on or off. I can just leave this on, uh, th this camera on all the time because when there isn't a chat message, when the graphic isn't turned on manually in Isadora, you just get a clean feed of whatever is behind this camera since everything is transparent other than the actual um, text and overlay itself. So what I've done is I've just over here in my overlays, let me get rid of this guy because that is an extra one. I just have right down here my NDI source as a camera overlay on top of my main camera and I just leave it there. I don't turn it off. I don't turn it on. It's, it's on all the time. I leave it there. And until I click graphic in over in Isadora, like I just did, it doesn't affect anything. And when I want to have that graphic come in, it's there. I don't even have to worry about it. So that's how it all works coming into Ecamm. What's missing from this still? To my mind, the only thing that's really missing is a way to make the workflow a little simpler. Uh, and I'm thinking about a way to do this, and I know Andy is also thinking about a way to do this. But right now, in order to get a chat message into, um, into Ecamm, you have to first accept the message. So let me click on this one. You have to accept it. You have to click Make Graphic, and then you have to say Graphic In. So there's at least three button presses if you don't have to do any editing or anything like that. Um, I don't mind the button presses. Having to use my mouse to do that is a little, uh, it's an extra step that I'd really rather avoid. So I'm thinking about ways that we can have, maybe use Keyboard Maestro to create a key command, you know, a um, move and, and um, uh, a move and click mouse command so that it actually knows where to click on the screen and then I can turn that into a shortcut, which I can then apply to a Stream Deck button or just a keyboard shortcut even. Andy is working and uh, thinking about ways to do this the proper way. I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to do it the crazy way. He's doing it the proper way in programming within Isadora um, on the back end. So that is one piece that's still not there. Um, and and I, the other piece which is connected to that is that you know, when we're bringing in comments from YouTube or Facebook in Ecamm, you kind of have that nice chat panel there and you can just click add to broadcast and it just comes in. That's fantastic for, for quick fire chat or comments. 
this to me to my mind is really built more for moderation so if you want to have a platform that allows you to see zoom comments zoom chat comments and really moderate them decide which ones you want to bring in if you want to be able to edit them and then put them up on screen either by you or by a third party maybe someone on your team this is just a fantastic clean easy professional looking way to do that that you can um, make uh, according to your own um, uh, branding and your own look as a professional. I used this for the first time officially in a session I just led earlier um, this morning, and it worked brilliantly. It was just fantastic. Um, so that's what I got for you. It's Zoom OSC and Isadora bringing right in over NDI into Ecamm Live for me or whatever programming you're using to stream out. Um, if you are maybe... Um, having a session on Zoom, but you also want to stream that. I've seen a lot of synagogues actually have classes or services where the main activity is happening in Zoom, but you're also streaming it out. Um, this is a great way to make sure that the people who are watching the stream are also being able to benefit from some of the Zoom chat messages as long as you have that that workflow and that moderation uh, and someone to, to do that with you or for you or if you are able to do that yourself. Um, so I will, um, again, leave the Isadora file in, uh, over in Discord. If you're watching this on YouTube and you want access to that, just reach out to me over at torotechguy.com. Huge shout out to uh, Andy Carluccio and his team for making this happen, making this possible, giving us all of these amazing tools to get the best out of Zoom, the best out of streaming. Um, and thanks also to Ecamm for making my life so fantastic with all these amazing tools. That's what I got for you this time. I will see you next time. On another episode, I guess, maybe, of How To. Bye.